Yo, what is up guys? Joker bringing you another video for Once Human. It is finally that time where we're receiving the second PvE scenario for Once Human, what's going to be commonly called Season 2 by a lot of people because they don't understand the difference. I've explained the difference between seasons and scenarios. Once Humans explained the difference between seasons and scenarios. And there seems to be a large amount of people that either just don't care or don't understand. And I don't feel like explaining it again. This video is meant to just be a TLDR of a couple of things to keep in mind going into the way of winter. So let's get into it. So starting us off, The Way of Winter is a PvE survival and exploration scenario where the main mechanic is temperature. On top of previous uh, survival parameters like sanity, energy, hydration, and stamina, we now have to keep a track of temperature as well. This scenario is going to take place in a new region. Um, this is a little hazy because in the video it said a new map, but then on their all their post it says a new region. I'm assuming it's just the northern half of the same map that we've been playing on, but it could also be just a completely different map. It is going to be the area of Arkham. Uh, you will have the ability of choosing a spawn in Onyx Tundra or Vinya Ford, so that is another new mechanic as as well you get to choose your spawning area in addition to that with the temperature gauge there is going to be a priority on managing it both heat and cold there's going to be like active volcanoes where you have to have heat resistance and there is going to be storms like blizzards hail rain or even if you walk into a, a lake on the top of the mountain you will freeze to death you will start experiencing negative effects you increase your heat resistance from food making it that uh, the cooking system is once again a high priority. I've already said that cooking should be one of the most important things that you do prioritize. So I may even try to bring over a lot of just cooking mats or potentially seeds. That way I have that done and you get heat resist, I'm sorry, and you get cold resistance from animal hide. So your progression is going to look something like this. You're going to spawn in, you're going to make a torch to keep you warm until you're able to kill a couple of animals and get the cold resistant gear. Then you're going to build a base and you're going to build essentially a furnace inside your base. Much later game, there's a blueprint that unlocks that's called a thermal tower. This is going to be the center of civilizations. This is a massive tower that busts what looks like a huge area. And it is going to give buffs to not only warmth, but crops growing there and other things. It didn't fully specify 100% of the things that it can do, but it's essentially you want to be living around a thermal tower. The dynamic weather is what I just mentioned. There's going to be like storms that try to murder you. On top of that, there is going to be Chaos Weaver events where there's going to be essentially kaiju living mechs from the new bad guys that are wandering around. They're going to be giant colossi made out of either fire or ice, it seems. And it, this seems, once again, something like it is going to be group-oriented. These things seem like they're going to just wander around the open world and you're going to be wanting to kill them in groups. I believe they don't start uh, spawning into like the third phase. I may be incorrect there, but we are breaking down the phases right now anyways. So the way of winter is going to be broken down into five phases. Uh, it's going to be a seven, eight, 10, 10, and then 28 day period. The first four phases are going to be the essential unlocking of everything with the game events unlocking and the areas unlocking as well. As you can see, phase two, you unlock a couple of dungeons in hard mode as well as new blueprints phase three dungeons unlock in a pro mode and then phase four there's going to be giant colossi roaming around trying to murder us from my understanding 
phase five is going to be that settlement period where you are able to go ahead and move but to a, another scenario or restart the current scenario. Moving into probably my favorite part of this announcement, the new deviations. We're receiving seven new deviations for the new region of Arkham, potentially 10. There's a reason why I say potentially 10, um, but I'll get into that in a second. So we have the tar putting, which will gather fuel around the territory, increase fuel refining speed when assigned to a refining facility. The zap cam, which attaches to your back, um, and it seems like it's extra damage when you're using a scoped weapon. I don't know. Uh, it's kind of confusing. I feel like it's just extra damage. I think it's this thing right here, and it's just going to work like a little shoulder-mounted turret. Then we have the Hydronaut Fish, which is really cool. It is a fishing minion. Um, so now we have a way to automate fishing as well as, I guess, a better way of gathering water. Um, as you can see, when activated, it gathers seawater from outside your territory, occasionally yielding fish. Also increases production speed when assigned to water filter or brewing barrel. Up next, we have another combat deviant, the Invincible Sun. I'm I'm going to assume it's this one, obviously, and it just does blaze damage to the designated target, which I'm going to have to double check. We do have blaze weapons, right? Yeah, we have blaze weapons. Never mind. I was going to say, uh, I'm going to have to double check and see if that's like a new type for the region, but I'm pretty positive we have blaze weapons. Then we have Snow Sprite. It continually generates ice crystals near the target. Ice crystals shatter when shot, dealing frost damage to nearby targets. That seems really, really cool and really AoE. That may be in contention for like the best AoE farming sprite because if you gather like a bunch of enemies, you activate that, then you shoot the sprites, everything explodes, right? Then we have Ice Pot, produces ice blocks with magical adhesiveness. I don't know what that means. I'm assuming this means it's going to make ice cubes that give your dishes a additional effects uh, that's the only thing that i can think of because an ice block with an adhesive effect I, I i don't know what that means ice that sticks to stuff i don't know how we're going to be able to use that right so uh, i'm assuming it's like it spawns ice cubes and it's like a translation issue and then we have Gazo Chio patrols your territory and attacks a suspicious target it be it beams of light its beams of light can para paralyze enemies. Oh my God, I can't read. I do apologize. Uh, this is like the sixth video I'm making today. So uh, I'm assuming that that is this guy. So this is Gazaccio. The ice pot is going to be this thing. The invincible sun is this. This is going to be the snow sprite. The hydronaut fish is going to be most likely that. No, hydronaut. This is going to be it. The zap cam is going to be this, and then tar putting is going to be this. I feel like I'm fairly accurate in calling those just by looking at them. On top of that, we're going to be getting seasonal tags that are going to be the same across all scenarios. Um, I don't know what they mean by that, but we plan to update the season tags on October 17th. Starting from then, all scenarios will use the same set of season tags, including consistent tags for seasonal combat environments. Cradles prize pools, de deviant invasions, and more. This will make it easier to select a scenario and play with your friends. I'm assuming that this is... I, I, I honestly don't know, so we're just going to skip over it. There's a new play, a prize pool, I'm assuming, for the wish machine, essentially just giving us new prizes. The cradle override, I don't care about. Seasonal calibration blueprints. It seems like we are going to be able to get a couple new blueprints, Vanguard style, Boost style, and Overflow style from, I guess, the start of the season. Close encounters are going to bring back the super anomaly. So my least favorite part of the season two of Many Bus, the super anomaly is where you have to use a specific type of weapon to kill. Uh, yeah, I hate that and I think it's stupid.
On top of that, on October 17th, there is going to be two events that launch. One is going to be essentially a get out of your scenario free card with the scenario reselection special event. This is going to essentially allow you to purchase an item for one Masuko mark that essentially lets you jump out of your scenario and sign up for the way of winter, even if it is not the settlement period of your scenario, even if it's not the time period when you can normally swap. And then they are going to have have a holiday event start as well, the, snor uh, the Snowy Realm Journey, which seems like it is going to be giving us a couple of limited edition deviations, right? Uh, you log in daily and you, cl uh, you collect your rewards. After seven days, you're going to unlock all of the rewards and you can redeem a special unique morphed deviation. These deviations, I feel like, are going to to be only around until November 17th. I feel like there's not going to be a way to get these after November 17th. So you're going to definitely want to make sure that you get them because deviations are the core of the game. They're the most important thing in the game, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, there looks like there's going to be, I want to say five of them. There's going to be the Shattered Maiden Wandering Witch. There's going to be the Buzzy Bee, the Pumpkin Lantern. And then it seems like there's going to be oh no that's just skins okay never mind then there's only going to be two unique deviations these ones right here i'm sorry about that i misread that there's new there's new cosmetics we don't care about that i mean you can care about that i don't care about that there's five new blueprints that we're going to be getting the m416 scorched earth the m416 autumn equinox acs 12 pyroclasm starter m416 silent uh, Anabasis and the MG4 conflicting memories. I don't know enough about guns. I'm going to assume that two of those are SMGs. One of them is a machine gun. Um, yeah, I I'm assuming um, two of them are SMGs and one of them is like a machine gun. Then we're going to get fire rune boots and snow camel gloves. Interestingly enough that we're not getting like these in sets where we have like a set of fire rune gear and a set of snow camo gear but you know what whatever there's also going to be a snow panther set and a black stone set that's probably the set that i was just mentioning so i probably should have read just a little bit further down they went ahead and they made a blueprint conversion system that unlocks after you reach level 40 in the first season so i'm assuming the first season of the way of winter because once again this is not the first season uh, like the first se i i don't know what it would mean by this if you've hit level 40 in many bus or another scenario then you already have access to this i'm assuming once you unlock level 40 in the way of winter you unlock this blueprint conversion they added radio stations and three additional deviations. This is what I was mentioning when I was saying that um, we get two, 10 new deviations, right? The seven above and then these three, the portal, the staff badges, and the Luna Moth. I do not believe we have any of those currently. I would have to double check, but I am too lazy. On top of that, we just have a large amount of optimizations. Uh, TLDR for this is um, they changed the way that a large amount of, well, not a large amount, they changed a way that several of the potentially underperforming deviations work to make them operate better. They went ahead and did some mod optimization, and then they did some ex accessory optimization as well. These are going to be mainly just quality of life things down here. The next important thing that I wanted to mention is vehicle parking. Uh, it seems like Blackfell will no longer be cluttered with trucks. It seems like the way that this is phrased that um, 
Obviously, you have very specific areas where you can have a truck in Blackfell. So it's going to probably be like one or two trucks. You're no longer going to see like 17 trucks in Blackfell, but I may be wrong there. There may just be no trucks allowed in Blackfell anymore. So that's going to be a huge impact on trade as well. Apart from that, they just went ahead and they updated a shit ton of bugs. And that's pretty much it because I don't want this video video to be super long and it is supposed to be a TLDR. Um, if you care about any of these optimizations, I say go ahead and take a look. I've only used the crossbow for like majority of my playtime, so none of these impact me. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date with this and future content. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to be rushing is the deviations, so I'm probably going to have guides on how to get all the new deviations relatively soon, as well as like, you know, how to gear to not instantly die. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Until next time, take care.